It's plus one to base combat skill and plus two to base endurance. Okay, base endurance, base endurance. Okay, okay. And I think I actually know what the fuck I'm doing, so that's a good thing. Right. All right. So, with that in mind, uh, I will moving on, be moving on to the items then. You can choose four items, and there's six arrows, two meals, rope, and a potion of lamb spoor. And I believe you already have a rope, right? Yep. Right. And, uh, I also think we have about enough arrows at this point. Let me see. We have 63 arrows. Man, that... More arrow yeah, that quiver is going to be pretty packed at this point. <laughs> yeah, we're carrying more, well, arrows than, I assume, Robin of Loxley at this point. <laughs> Even that guy would look at this and say, Damn, do you really think you need that many? 60 arrows, that, 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 if I remember correctly, that's actually a pretty average, that's actually a pretty normal number for the average archer. You would know that better than I. But it's up uh, to you. I mentioned the items that are not weapons, so, yeah. But before we proceed to choose items, I should mention we have a few items in our backpack that I need to ask you guys if we still need. We have a bowstring, a ball of string, and an hourglass. Let's just keep it. Alright, but that means that we can only pick one new item, if I'm not mistaken. Because we have the following. Potion of Alethea, we have a bottle of wine, a lantern, and a, as mentioned before, rope. Yeah, let's pick up the potion of Lounge Boer then. Okay, potion of Lounge Boer. And it heals four endurance points. Yep, that description I still have. Right. Oh, by the way, give me a, uh, could you roll the die? Did I give you the die? No, you didn't. Why don't you just add it as a link to your favorite, so I don't have to send you the link every time? I can. Let's see if I can just look it up. It's called Die Simulator. I mean, I can find it if you want. Uh, if you want, uh, want me to. I mean, I have to turn off the camera anyway to get, send you guys the map. So uh. might as well be doing that. But yeah, be right back. Back, people, with a map of Ixia and the Heartlands. It looks Let like a nice, nice place. Look, it have a topaz whale. In the Tosas Sea. That would be ah. Tosas. Yeah, the Heartlands. Tosas. Sorry. Yeah. Tosas yeah, see, the, see, the Heartlands, that's the area I was talking about. Tada Tizaga. And see, there's only like two towns there. Right at the bottom. Konanen and Zekot. Yeah. And otherwise, there's just a lot of wild land to march through. So yeah, hills, hills, rivers, forests, and mountains. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, could you roll that d10 now? Mm. Of course. Ten. Right. Add thirty gold crowns to your vast hoard of money. <laughs> How much was it? Thirty. Thirty. 30, okay, that gives us the total amount of... Okay, what is 188 plus 30? That would be... It is 218. Eight. No, 18, yeah, right. Thank you. Right, um, Rana, could you go and check what rank you are right now? What's it called? All right, our current rank and status would be Kai Sun Lord. Right, and now you're getting an upgrade to that. Anybody want to guess? We are now the Lord of Mooning. No. No, we are not. Kai Sun King? <laughs> Close. You are now a Kai Sun Thane. Oh, Thane? nice. Yeah, C-H-A-N-E, Thane. You know, what is those that? Guys, a noble that title those of some kind? Okay, um, no, Thanes, if I'm not mistaken, were the ones that actually protected the Yarl back in the old days. Viking warriors, basically. Oh. 
So and yes, yes, and yes, the cute green alien was named after them. Wow. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, thank you very much. But I'm still keeping the picture of a mighty Viking warrior in my mind. Well, oh, no, in, in most of the, uh, the the sagas I have read, they're just described as berserkers, those who are closer to the king. Ah. Well, still, I suppose it can vary. But I'm just getting the picture of a Viking with, you know, blazing eyes and shooting fire out his mouth. And what by, the way, uh, by the way, I really like the artwork around the map. Yeah, it looks very nice. Yeah. If uh, a little cold. Huh. One of the possible Danish words for Thane is a Sussulman. What? Oh. Cool! Weird. Anyways, um, uh, Cobra, have you uh, shown... You're gonna show the viewers the map, right? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, I cool, did. Because they should really see this artwork. It's really cool. Yep. By the way, those aren't dead. Look fucking terrifying. And I you really like. And I really like the look of that ice castle. Yep. It really is the Lich King. Except this yeah. this guy was before the Lich King. I guess yeah. that makes Arthur a pretender in more ways than once. I have no idea. Also, I think it is sort of a nice idea to have a castle entirely of ice, not just, you know, made from metal and all that added on to it. Yeah. I it, think it's in Sweden that there actually is a hotel entirely made of ice. Yeah, don't they make one of those uh, each year and then it melts again at some point? I, I think so. And, it kind of um, says a lot about the guys up there. Oh, let's build a hotel of ice. Oh, it melted. What do we do? We build another one! <laughs> I you know, know that know. sounds like a, like a story out of Molbo, if you ask me. Mm. Molz. Is that what it's called? Weird. Yeah. Hmm. Molbo. The people live there, it's called Molbo. Yeah. Weird. You know, there's one thing we Danes are not good at, it's calling people things for where they live. It always ends up being weird. You can never figure out what the pattern <laughs> is. In any case, that's not here nor there. <clears throat> Your skills have been upgraded. A simulance has been upgraded. Let me see. Simulance has been upgraded. Uh, yeah. You can now summon Fork. Summon Fork, okay. N not a Fork, Fork. Fork, yeah, okay. I do not think we can use a Fork for a lot. Well, you could always stab people, but no, this is a lot more useful. It could really fuck up someone's day. Oh, so you day. never know what you can use with. You never know when a weird spell might be useful. I mean, well, have you guys even read Dots and Droids? That uh, summon bigger fish spell. Jesus Christ. Yep. In any case, a simulance has been upgraded again. You can now blur yourself to better avoid missile fire. In other words, we can just become incorporeal, or as you say, a blur, while they fire things at us. Yeah. Also, Grand Hunt Mastery has been upgraded. Yes. You are now protected from natural electricity. You know, like lightning. Okay, that's sort of an advantage. Yep. Also, Kai's screen has been upgraded. You can now erect a mind forge. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah. And what do you think about? Oh, do and, continue. Yeah, and you don't have Kai uh, Grand Pathmanship, right? If I remember correctly, you didn't. Nope. Good. Then I didn't skip anything. So let's continue. <clears throat> Lord Remor removes a sphere of crystal from a pocket of his robe and holds it up to the lantern light. It is filled with a swirling grey mist. Softly he murmurs the words of an ancient spell and the mist clears to reveal the anxious faces, face of your friend, Guildmaster Bainden. Remor speaks briefly to Bainden's image, requesting that he comes to the monster at once. I'll be, there. I'll be with you within the hour, says the voice of Bainden, a whisper in your mind. Your friend is in Toran, 60 miles to the north, yet he holds true to his word. In this than an hour, he arrives at the monastery aboard Skyrider. His sleep... Oh, arrives precisely when he means to. 
Indeed, Gandalf, <laughs> indeed. His sleek flying ship. Two excited young Kai aspirants bring word of his arrival to the vault, and you respond by making your way swiftly to the surface. Faint and Skyriders hovering above the training park, the hum of its magical engine amplified by the surrounding walls and battlements. It is dusk on this wintry evening, and a shower of feathery snow is illuminated by the craft's lanterns. A rope ladder hangs from the bow, railing to the frost-hardened earth. Go aboard, Grandmaster! Oh, sorry, wrong voice. Go aboard, Grandmaster, urged Remora after replacing his vocal cords. Painter will advise you and provide you with what you'll be needing. I shall stay here and pray for your safe return. You bid a hasty farewell to your mentor before climbing the dangling rope ladder with the legendary speed and grace that set you apart from lesser warriors. Painton is waiting as you hold yourself aboard. He greets you with a glad smile. His face cannot hide his deep concern for what may await you in Ixia. You wave a final farewell to Lord Ramoa, then you retreat to the warmth of Bainton's cabin as the Skyrider glides over the monastery's southern wall and ascends into the leaden sky. Your friend Bainton has already set course for Vadera, the principal city of Lentia, a destination which is more than a full day's flight west of Summerland. Were this not the first stage of a longer voyage to Ixia, you would gladly welcome the change to visit Vadera, for your many friends there in the court of King Sarnak of Lentia. During the flight, Bainton details the plans which have been made on your behalf. King Sarnak himself has promised his help. He will provide you with a boat and a pilot to sail you from Vadera to Asgard Island, a desolate. I'm on a boat. Yay! I'm on a boat. A desolate Lentian outpost in the Tosa Sea. On your arrival there, you will be transferred to a Lentian ice boat, a craft specifically built to withstand the power of the treacherous pack ice which clings to the Ixian shoreline at this time of the year. The ice boat will land you on the coast of Ixia, Lone Wolf, says Bainton, and then it will wait at anchor for you to return upon the completion of your mission. How long will the ice boat wait for me? you ask apprehensively. If you do not return within seven days, the pilot is ordered to set sail for the Dera without you. The toast says in winter is a cruel and terrible sea. No ordinary man could hope to survive there for much longer than a week, no matter how strong his ship or plentiful supplies. Which reminds me, if you are to survive your visit to Death Lord Ixitoga's frigid realm, you will be needing some special protection. Do you have a platinum amulet? Let me have a look. <coughs> Think. Oh. Let me see platinum, platinum. Yep, we have plat uh, platinum amulet. Bainton reaches for a small wooden box which lies half buried on the shelf amongst a clutter of scrolls and charts. As he does so, he is momentarily distracted by the platinum amulet which you wear on a cord around your neck. You notice he then suddenly inquisitive look in his eyes. How did you come by that? he asks as he stares fixedly at the amulet. It was given to me by Gvinian, the sage of Ereda. I'm sure its power kept me safe from the perils of the Moken Gorge. Tell me, my friend, have you heard of a sage? Oh yes, replies Bainton thoughtfully. I know, Gwynion. If the amulet you wear was given to you by him, then perhaps you do not need the special protection I had in mind after all. Bainton takes a small wooden box and hands it to you. Upon opening, you discover it contains a platinum amulet, almost identical to the one you are already wearing. Huh. I see what you mean, you say, as you close the lid and return the box to Bainton. Bainton tosses the box back onto the cluttered shelf, whoop, and continues with the briefing. I have swear, some people have bling. Lone Wolf has loot <laughs> all over the place. Like he's just this walking shelf showing off all kinds of artifacts, and he has a skirt <laughs> made of keys. I mean, I, it's a wonder he can do any stealth at all because everywhere he goes, he'll sound like clingle, 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 clingle. <laughs> sound like some sort of Christmas ornament or a wind chime. Maybe he even has co just come to the, co to, the, to the decision that he's some crazy guy walking around that doesn't really take him seriously, usually. You know, it's pretty hard to argue against the crazy part, everything considered. Yeah. Having satisfied himself that you have adequate protection, he turns his attention to your weapons. It concerns me greatly that, there's, that so little is known of Sogon, the Death Lord City. There's no way of knowing what unholy breed of creature awaits you there. It seems that you can be confident of only one thing, Lone Wolf. Whoever or whatever inhabits that dreadful place will surely be hostile to your presence. If you are to defeat the Death Lord of Ixia and his minions, you'll need a weapon of exceptional power, a weapon capable of destroying that which is already dead. 